A signal bus is a set of shared lines that connect multiple devices for input, output, or both. The idea being that you don't need a million wires connecting every single thing to every single other thing. And you just need some sort of traffic control to make sure that two things aren't trying to talk at the same time, and thus short each other out. If I use a single wire, a 1-bit bus, as an example, it could look something like this, with a microcontroller, one of its pins, and one pin on each of these devices, three different devices, all shorted together. And then the microcontroller would have signal lines going through to the devices to tell which one to turn on and off, using decoders, muxes, whatever. So a device might support this natively if it has a tri-state pin, like the microcontroller on an Arduino Uno. You can set it to output high or low, but you can also set it to input, which is high impedance. And input doesn't mean you have to read it, input just means not output. So input can also just mean turn it off. But the device might not support that natively because it's more engineering. Why do you even need that? So you can use a tri-state buffer, which is basically just a buffer that you can turn on and off. So each of these would have, whether it's input or output, you'd have a buffer on each of these. And then the microcontroller would turn the buffers on and off to let each one read or write. And then if you wanted it to be bi-directional, you'd need two buffers each, one going each direction. So you could turn on reading and you can turn on writing. But if you have something called a bus transceiver, it's basically like two tri-state buffers in one. It's a tri-state buffer in that you can turn the entire thing on or off, but you also set the direction. So one side would be connected to the device and one side would be connected to the bus, and you could have bus input device output or device input bus output or neither output. Now before I get into this chip, you might be thinking, as I've been thinking, why in the world do you need this if the same pins on the device can read and write? Why not just connect them directly to the bus? Why do you need a transceiver? And if they can't both read and write, then the transceiver is meaningless because then you can't reconfigure it. Basically, tri-state buffers, bus transceivers, tri-state pins, all of these things are for different situations with different devices. So I'm just going to show you the chip and how it works, and then someday you may need it depending on what you're trying to connect to what. So let's not fuss too much about when it's useful and when it's not. I'll just say sometimes it's what you want and go from there. The 74 family, 74X chips, TTL variants, chip number 245. It is an octal bus transceiver. It means it has eight bits. They're all connected together, so it's an eight bit transceiver all at once. Besides VCC and ground, it's got A1 to A8 and B1 to B8. These are your two sides. Then you've got a direction pin and an active low output enable. So if output enable is high, that means it's off, which means both of these sides are high impedance. If output enable is low, then it's on, and direction, I forget which way is which, but it's in the data sheet. One direction, so if direction is high, one of these will be on, the other one will be high impedance, and in the other direction, one of them will be on, and the other one will be high impedance. And it's a buffer, so the signal is not being let through. It's not an analog switch, or even a digital switch, so it is safe to connect whatever digital signal from whatever source to the other side, because the chip is going to be powering the output signal. And that's it. One side outputs, the other side outputs, and neither outputs. That's all there is to a bus transceiver. Two tri-state buffers in one. And if you wanted to make one of these with two tri-state buffers, you would just have, you know, your direction line would be the enable signal on the buffers, and you would invert one. So a high would give high to one and low to the other, and then a low would give low to the first and high to the second. And then you would need additional logic, some sort of gates to implement output enable if you needed that too. So the benefit of this is you can do it all in one chip, should you happen to need to. So since people like visuals, here's a quick one. So I'm using a 5 volt power supply, and I'm going to demonstrate with just one bit, because all the 8 bits work together, so one bit on my output board. I should point out that the thing is drawing 63 milliamps right now. This is not a low power chip. The 4000 series is basically the low power CMOS equivalent of these chips. Remember, when these were first designed, we did not have MOSFET technology for chips. I don't know if MOSFETs had been invented yet. They probably had, maybe, but they certainly weren't available for mini ICs like BJT's already had been. So back in the day, you took what you got. 
Nowadays, you would use the 4000 series, but we'll just demonstrate the operation and not worry about the power. So right now, output enable is high, and you can see there's nothing going on whatsoever. If I turn output enable to low, then the chip turns on. Now, right now, I don't have any inputs into the chip. They're both high impedance. So this is just a floating input, and it's decided it's high. So if I take the direction, and I switch the direction back and forth, you can see that only one of these lights is on at a time. One of them is connected to A1, and the other is connected to B1. So when the light is off, if you're not familiar with this display board, red on the top is high, blue on the bottom is low, and neither on is high impedance. So, like I said, floating inputs and it's just deciding it's high, but one is on at a time, and it doesn't matter if I turn output enable high, then nothing happens. So now, if I make the right side have an active input, then I can actually switch a data line. You can see that that one's changing. If I change the direction and then turn the other one on to actually give a data signal, then that one's changing. And I don't want to have both on at the same time because they'll short together. But it's, it's a very obvious and simple operation. Output enable decides whether there's any output at all. Direction decides which side is the output, and then it passes it through with buffering. Nothing more to it. And just to mention, sometimes the power during that got as low as 44 milliamps. It was highly variable. And no, it's not my output board because my output board is supplied by its own USB. The output board doesn't draw power from the main supply. So again, use the 4000 series for low power. But that's how a bus transceiver works. So you'll just pick what you need based on the situation, whether you connect something directly to a bus, use some sort of buffer, a tri-state buffer, or a full-on transceiver is going to depend on what the device is, how the bus works, how the microcontroller works, and everything else. So while you begin weighing your options, I'll be seeing you.